So let's hear a short example with and without this effect. And we have exaggerated the effect so that it will be easier to hear here on YouTube. If you are going to use this in a real world situation, then you would probably have a more subtle setting for this. And as you can see, it is lifting the signal in this uh, frequency area. Yeah, so you can see there on the threshold, when the signal goes under that threshold, it will be lifted. The thing we want to achieve here is to increase the amount of energy in this area by lifting the quieter parts and making them louder. But we really don't want to affect the overall sound of this area. We could listen to how this would sound with a static EQ just to hear yeah. how the character changes. And one way to make that more easy to hear is to use the band solo button. So if we solo this band just briefly and listen what is happening in this area, then we can also get a better grip of what to listen for. So one thing to notice here is that the snare drum, that is, um, it sounds like a snare drum and a clap, something like that, hand clap. That sound gets more EQ'd when we are lifting the this area, so it gets a bit more, uh, a bit more, what you say? Nasal, maybe. Or... Nasal character. It's, yeah. The sound of the mix sounds quite drastically different when using static EQ like this. Yeah. So we can switch between using a static EQ and using this dynamic uh, yeah. alternative. And also now, if we switch the dynamic um, version on and off, you can hear that the sound of the snare and the hand clap, for example, doesn't change that much. Let's have a listen. Yeah, we can go uh, oh, to back to the uh, normal EQ band once more and switch on and off. So you can hear that the difference between on and off is more drastic in the static EQ version. Yeah, the hand clap and that uh, goes up quite a lot. And also it's a little bit masking the low end a little bit. Yeah. And then so you get those two effects. But then when we switch to the dynamic EQ, you can hear that the hand clap is kind of the same when the snare is kind of the same level. But there is more detail and more clarity in this area. Yeah, which also is actually quite good for the low end.
yeah. uh, to have more clarity in this area, but we can talk about that some other time. Yeah. So this is a more subtle way of getting more clarity in a certain frequency area without making the sound, the overall sound, more EQ'd. And this is definitely one of the tools that you can have in your toolbox. In this example, we have exaggerated, yes. just to make it clear. <laughs> we wouldn't use this much processing, probably, on a mix. And sometimes it doesn't work as well, so yeah. So there are two things that I think we should talk about here. One thing is, is the simple thing about dynamics. So the dynamics are essentially the difference between the loud and the quiet sounds. Uh, so that's your dynamics and you can have macro dynamics and micro dynamics. And so the macro dynamics would be like the loud and the quiet parts of the songs, the difference between those. And then you have more micro dynamics, which maybe if you compare like transients to like what happens in between. Yeah. Yeah, so if you want to uh, increase your dynamics, you have to either boost your loudest parts or uh, decrease your quieter parts. Uh, so that's how you uh, increase the dynamics. And of course, if you want to reduce the dynamics, uh, which is common with just normal standard downward compression where you take down the, the strongest parts of the signal, then you, you either take down the strongest parts or you actually increase the quieter parts. So both of those cases are uh, reducing the dynamics. So what we did here was actually uh, increasing the quieter parts, which is also a form of reducing the dynamics, even though we're increasing something. Yeah, so we're reducing the dynamics, so that's compression. If we had been expanding the dynamics that would have been expansion but now we are using compression even though we are increasing the, the level of the quieter signal. So you have four types of dynamic processing here that you get access to in this version of uh, TDR Nova. We can talk about uh, the above case here so that's when you you're using the dynamic processor above a certain threshold that you set. So for downward compression the louder parts get quieter. So you're reducing the louder parts of the signal and you have like a ratio, something maybe two to one or something like that. And so the gain is reduced and you maybe use this for, if you, for example, have uneven notes in the low end, maybe you will use a, like something like this, a, an instance of TDR Nova to reduce when the signal goes over a certain threshold to just like tuck some of those notes into the signal a little bit. You have to do that quite carefully, but that's one way that you can use it. So that's kind of normal standard uh, compression. You can also use uh, downward compression for like uh, shaping transients and things like this. That is quite usual in mastering. Then you, in the above mode, you can also set it for upward expansion. And that is when the louder parts get even louder the ratio will be 0.5 to 1 or something like that. And then you're actually overall uh, boosting gain. So this will actually increase the dynamics because you're making the louder parts get louder. Uh, and then we have the below mode here. So if you're in downward compression uh, with those settings and you press the below mode, you go directly into downward expansion, which is that the quieter sounds get uh, quieter. Uh, so in the above mode, the louder sounds got quieter, and now you have the quieter sounds getting quieter. So you will have a, a ratio of maybe two to one or something, and the gain is reduced. If you change the ratio to uh, 0 0.5 to one, you go into upward compression, and that's what we we did in the in this example, and that's when the quieter sounds get louder, and you're reducing the dynamics. So you have these four cases. And two of these are reducing the dynamics, and those are the downward compression and the upward compression. And then you have two of them are expanding the dynamics, which are the upward expansion and the downward expansion. And these four cases are very useful. Uh, we use all of these in different ways. Downward compression, upward expansion, and upward compression we use with the emphasis on downward compression. We also use downward expansion when we're doing denoising, etc. But that's kind of built into the denoiser. It's more in an indir indirect it's, way. Yeah, it's more indirect. But if you are mixing, you're uh, 
probably using gates and things like that. And that is downward expansion. You're making quieter sounds, even more quieter. So it's good to recognize these four areas, understanding the difference between them, because they're so, such cornerstone techniques in mixing and mastering and just understanding how these tools are used because otherwise it's just a b- bunch of controls. And it's like, if you see it as a combination lock here <laughs> and you're like searching for the right combination, it's very difficult if you're just like trying to imagine how hard that would be to find the correct uh, setting if you don't know how to set these. Mm. It's, very dif- it's very difficult. And knowing these four types of dynamic processing makes it much easier to understand pretty much any kind of dynamic processor. And if you look at a regular compressor, it will in 99 times out of 100 be a downwards compressor. That's the most common type of compressor. Yeah. But there are other types of compression and expansion as well. And sometimes you, maybe you hear the word upward uh, compression and you, uh, you know, oh, that must be different from downward compression, but how is it different? Yeah. And how do I do it? And how can, can I do it with the, just a normal compressor and sometimes you can't. So it's good to know the the differences. Yeah. So let's break this down a bit. First of all, it's a regular peak filter. So we have set it at 1500 Hertz and a Q value of 0.50. And this is of course dependent on which area do you want to boost the the details in. Uh, And in this case, we have chosen that area. And then in order to get access to the dynamic section, we have to press the threshold button. And the blue line will appear there. Yeah, then we get the blue line. Yeah, the threshold. The blue line is the threshold, and we can set the threshold using this um, button here. So the threshold decides where the action happens. And in this case, we are in the below threshold mode. That's what this button does. We can either be above threshold or we can be below threshold. This will decide if the dynamic section should react to signals that are louder than the threshold or to signals that are quieter than the threshold. And in this case, we are reacting to signals quieter than the threshold. And the yellow line is the resulting frequency response from the EQ. So if I would increase the gain of this band, then we can see that the resulting frequency response is um, uh, affected by that. Yeah. Uh, In this case, we are actually increasing or we're boosting here in the signal. So that uh, yellow line goes up a little bit with how much it's, it's boosted. Yeah. And we can also see how much it is boosting by looking at the gain uh, control. Let's have a look. It's a bit difficult to see, but you can see that it's lighting up. Um, yeah, with a matching yellow yeah. there. And you can also see on the threshold uh, control that uh, you have a blue. So it's uh, yeah. color-coded. Color-coded. And in this case, we want to do upwards compression. And in order to get boosts from the dynamic processor, then we need to have a ratio that is below 1 to 1. And in this case, we are at 0.7 to 1. And that will make the processor boost the signal. If we would have had a ratio above 1 to 1, then it would cut the signal instead. It would decrease the signal. Like that. Yeah. So in this case, 0.7 to 1 is where we landed. In a real world example, we would probably have it closer to one to one, like 0.9 to one or something like that. But that effect gets a bit too subtle to translate here on YouTube. So we are using a more drastic setting in this case. And then we have the attack and release settings. And the way you can look at attack and release in TDR Nova is that the attack will decide how fast the the dynamic processor will react when the signal gets louder. And the release is how fast will it react when the signal gets quieter. So in this case, when we are using the uh, band as an upwards compressor, then we will get a boost when the signal is quiet. And the attack uh, control 
will decide how quickly will the, the boost go away when the signal gets louder. Yeah, so we can, we can show this, what happens when we change the attack time. Yeah, and one way to illustrate this is to listen to the delta signal. And TDRNOVA has a feature called GR Delta, and this will listen to the difference between the input and the output of the processor. So in this case, we will hear only what is being added to the signal. In this case, we are boosting the, uh, the signal. And in this signal, we can hear that if we shorten the attack, then we will get less of the transients from the uh, kick and snare, for example. And with longer attack, it will let more of the initial attack of the kick and snare be affected by this change. Yeah. So in this case, we can have a pretty short attack because we don't really want the snare and clap sound to be affected. And if we want even shorter times, then we can press the AH button. This is uh, look ahead. So then it will look into the future and actually decrease the gain in the future. So if we increase, increase the attack time, then we can hear that the snare and the clap sound will be more affected by this. So the longer attack time we have, the more it will behave like a static EQ. And the release is how quickly will it go back into uh, boosting the signal when the, the level of the signal drops below the threshold. So if we listen a bit and change the release time, then we can hear uh, what is happening. You can also see here how it's in boost mode more when you have a shorter release. Yeah. It, it, it goes into the boost mode more quickly. Yeah. We can listen to the delta signal and hear how the release is affecting the, the sound of that. We can hear that after each snare hit, it will release very quickly to, to, the boost, um, to be boosted again. But if we increase the release time, it will be much more slow to uh, go back into the boosted yeah. mode. So this is the trick. We can listen to it once again, just now when you know all these uh, controls. So that's it for this video, hope you found it helpful, we'll see you again the next time.